because anger and frustration and control and hatred and envy and jealousy and insecurity and unworthiness and guilt and shame and suffering and depression those are all derived those are emotions that are derived from the hormones of stress and psychology calls those normal states of consciousness those are altered states of consciousness because in stress the physiology is that we're knocked out of homeostasis we're knocked out of balance because we're be perceiving some threat some danger some emergency and so the stronger the emotion you feel to whatever stressor there is in your life the more you pay attention to it and so in time then you have to keep your attention on all the important elements in your life so you sit down to do a meditation and when you're living in stress and you're living in survival there's only three things that are important in that moment your attention is on your body because you got to preserve it your attention is on something in your environment and what's in your environment people objects things places and you're very preoccupied with time and when you're in stress and you're in survival the brain goes onto a default mode and it's naturally trying to predict the next moment based on what it's learned in the past. And so as you always try to forecast the future based on your memory of the past, you can't be in the present moment, right? So and yet our our model of change, what we discovered is that the only way a person can change is when they get beyond their body, they get beyond all the elements of their environment. and they get beyond that predictable fusion of familiar past and they sink into the present moment which is the unknown. So if you can't do that because of the hormones of stress, most people will sit down and they'll say, oh, "Okay, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to start this process where I'm going to rehearse how I'm going to be today." And they start thinking about their cell phone. They start thinking about all their emails and they start thinking, "I can't meditate. There's something wrong with me. It's my mother's fault." You know, and they actually believe that thought to be the truth and then they get up and they they actually reaffirm it and say I can't meditate now <laughs> i can tell you that if you are willing to see that thought as just the thought in your brain and you're curious what's on the other side of that thought yeah you're going to feel uncomfortable but if you had some tools and skills to apply and you were able to take your attention off your cell phone and settle your body back down into the present moment that would be a victory and then your body would say come on you got to feel a little frustration now you got to be impatient you got to be judgmental come on that's how what you always <laughs> think that's how you always feel and you like an animal you settle the body back down into the present moment and you tell it it's no longer the mind that you're the mind that's a victory Then the body says, uh, "Hey, dude, you're super busy. You've got a lot of things to do. You got a lot of people to see. You got a lot of places to go. You got a lot of things to do, and you've been doing the same thing every day. Your body's going to want to get up and do something. You're going to want to quit because your brain's telling you that you can't do this. If you had the awareness to settle the body back down into the present moment, you would be executing a will." that's greater than the program because most people lose their free will mm. to those programs and it's that tedium in the beginning that is an uncompromising will where you keep training the animal to stay to take all of its attention off the environment to get beyond all the cravings the feelings the habits of the body the drives of the body and catch yourself defaulting to that predictable future bringing your body back into the present moment siphoning energy back your attention into the past based on those familiar emotions of the past we've discovered that if you're willing to do that for just a few days you could actually liberate an enormous amount of energy from your body you go from particle to wave from matter to energy and you're literally transmuting those limited emotions into elevated emotions and something really beautiful happens if you're willing to fire the crucible and sit through that long enough all of these emotions move that energy moves right up into the heart and the person starts falling in love with life they start feeling this state of gratitude this gratefulness to be alive this inevitable word of relaxed and awake And something really magical happens when we've discovered uh, this little simple thing. When that energy makes it to the heart, there's only one place it wants to go. And it goes straight to the brain.
So the person starts relaxing into their heart when they feel this feeling. And the more they relax into the heart, the more their brain all of a sudden starts becoming aroused. And they start going into these elevated gamma brainwave patterns. Now, gamma is not unconscious. Gamma is actually super conscious. It's actually super aware. You're outside the program now. So when that occurs and the brain goes into gamma brainwave patterns, what we discovered is not, it's not a little gamma. It's not a lot of gamma. It's not a whole lot of gamma. It's a supernatural amount of gamma. And we start seeing these brain waves where we see theta start carrying alpha. And alpha starts resonating with beta. And beta starts creating high beta. And high beta starts creating gamma. And you see these standing waves of brain coherence happening. And the person feels so amazing that they don't want the moment to end. A day that never came, but has managed to spoil every game. One day that takes all the blame, the basis of all fear and shame. Cripples the blossoming of the life's flame. A spoiler that makes life a dream. Traps the limitless in a limited scene. One day that takes all the blame, the basis of all fear and shame. Cripples the blossoming of life's flame. A spoiler that makes life a dream. Traps the limitless in a limited scene. A day that never comes but the world it rules. Tomorrow never happened to anybody but the idea of tomorrow has robbed people. A huge mass of people of their life. Just the idea. Nobody ever touched a tomorrow in their life. Nobody ever experienced one. Nobody ever saw one. Just the idea completely robs people of everything that could be life. You can only behold now. You can never behold tomorrow. Not because it's out of reach, because it doesn't exist. You can only imagine tomorrow. You will never behold tomorrow. Never ever. But still, for most human beings, it is this, an idea. An idea whose time will never come. It is that idea which drives most people's lives, unfortunately. Even if you drive your life with an idea. Even if you drive your life with an idea, you must drive with an idea whose time may come sometime, but this is an idea whose time will never come. But it still drives people. It still drives most lives on the planet. That is why most lives on this planet are not lives. They're just a bunch of thoughts, emotions, ideas, prejudices. Most lives are not a reality. They're just a psychological. They're just a psychological existence. They're just a dream because reality happens now, reality happens here. In your mind, only a dream can happen. And life and death will happen today. Dream is about tomorrow. It's better to dream of something that will come true. Tomorrow is a dream that will never come true. So what you refer to as spiritual process. It's about knowing life. You can know life only today. You can know life only now. This is the moment. I'm not trying to give you a teaching. When I say this is the moment, oh, he said, this is the moment. It's not about that. This moment is not an idea. It is the only reality. This moment is not a teaching. It is the only living thing. It is the only living thing in the existence is right now, nothing else. So don't try to understand it. Don't try to digest it. You just have to behold it in all its entirety. Start with the rain, good way to begin. See how to address the larger issues of my life. 
There are no large issues in your life. What is the large issue that you're talking about? It is just about what job to take, which girl to marry, where to go for vacation, whether whether to get married or not get married. You know, these are the things, isn't it? These are not large issues. These are little things in your life. Yes. Oh, is it just a small thing whom I get married to? I'm not saying it's a small thing, but as an issue, it's a small issue, little issue, as a consequence to your life. Yes, it has many things, but this is something that human beings have done for millions of years. We have enough experience on these things, isn't it? We know that whatever job we take, whoever we marry, it is just the way we make out of it. Every experience of life, you can make it an enriching experience. Every experience in your life, you can make a curse out of it. See, there is nothing wrong in your job, whatever job you're doing. There's nothing wrong getting this job. There's nothing wrong in losing this job. There is nothing wrong in getting married. There's nothing wrong in getting divorced. There is nothing wrong in not getting married. There is nothing wrong in anything. There is nothing wrong. In this or that, but it is just that you make misery out of it. That's wrong. You do this, you make misery out of it. If you do that, you make misery out of it. That's what is wrong with you. So you got married. Is it wrong? That's not the point. There's nothing wrong with it. You did not get married. Is it wrong? No, there's nothing wrong with it. That's wonderful too. You got divorced. Is it wrong? No. That's also wonderful. It is just that you make misery out of everything. That's what is wrong. You just address that one issue. Everything will be settled. That's what we are looking at. How not to make misery out of everything? If this one thing is settled, everything is settled, isn't it? Yes. If you know how to walk through this world joyfully, through marriage and divorce and celibacy and everything, if you know how to walk through this joyfully. What is the problem? Whatever you do is beautiful, isn't it? If you don't even know how to be happy, don't have such goals as realization. They are very far away from you. Happiness is not just a state of mind; it is just the basis of the quality of life that you live here. Is it such a small thing, happiness? Oh, it's just a state of mind. Is it a small thing? So, biggest issue, isn't it? If you are capable of going through this world joyfully, then you could talk about going beyond. If you are not even capable of going through this joyfully, talking about beyond is no good. There is no way. I'm telling you, there is simply no way for a person who is constantly creating inner battles all the time. How will he deal with the bondages of life? How will he transcend that? There's no question. It doesn't arise in your life. So first thing is working towards to be a blissful human being. If that happens, the rest becomes very simple, because a blissful human being. Once your happiness is not at stake, anything that's needed you will do, isn't it? Right now you cannot do what's needed because always your happiness is at stake. You are thinking what which is the right thing to do, which is the right thing to do. There is no right thing to do in your life. There is no wrong thing to do in your life. If you know how not to make misery out of everything that you do, whatever you are doing is the right thing. If you are making misery out of everything that you do, everything that you do is a wrong thing. So that's the only issue you have to look at. Others are all petty things. What does it matter? Which way you do it?